today's presentation, we had over 124 pre-registered attendees. TechNation is proud to offer these free webinars as a way to provide valuable information to the healthcare technology industry. We will offer anywhere from one to two webinars per month on Wednesdays, focusing on issues pertinent to the HTM community. We'd like to mention that many of these speakers that we'll be featuring on our webinars will also be uh, speakers and presenters at our biannual MD Expo, uh, the next of which is coming up April 9th through the 11th in Las Vegas. If you visit www.mdexposhow.com, you can find out more about the educational schedule and the event calendar. Looking ahead, our next Webinar Wednesday presentation will be on March 26th. It's going to feature Tim Shaver, and he will be speaking on Get It Done, How to Delegate. So you won't want to miss that one. A few notes before we begin. Uh, your participation today makes you eligible for one and a half CE credits. You will receive a post-webinar survey about today's presentation in your email. Once that survey is completed, we will email you your certificate with the CE credits within three weeks of today's date. During the webinar, all lines will be muted, but you can submit questions during the presentation by using the questions feature on your dashboard located on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, if for some reason you have any problems with that, you're also welcome to email your questions to webinar at mdpublishing.com. We'd also like to thank today's sponsor, Garnett Biomedical. Garnett Biomedical was founded by biomedical engineers with over 40 years of combined industry experience. They employ a simple and innovative management plan to reduce costs associated with managing medical equipment. Combined with input from experienced industry leaders, their solutions help improve the quality of services provided on the bench and clinical floor. Their operations are driven by customer satisfaction, never profit. Visit GarnettBiomedical.com to learn more about the reliable biomedical solutions for healthcare facilities across the U.S. Lastly, our presenter today is Manny Roman, who has over 33 years of experience in the training and management of diagnostic imaging service. His presentation will discuss how life and business forces us to make many conclusions, judgments, and actions throughout our day. Sometimes we arrive at inaccurate conclusions that cause improper actions and poor results. This webinar will describe how the ladder of inference is both the cause and the solution for avoiding these unpleasant and unfortunate results. Now, we're going to hand over the call to Manny. Uh, one last note, um, just a reminder, you don't have to wait till the end of the call to ask questions. We do encourage you to ask them throughout the webinar particularly if Manny is speaking on a topic that you need more clarification on. Thanks so much. Um, Manny, it's all yours. Thank you, Kristen. I appreciate it. Uh, what uh, we're going to talk about today is the ladder of inference. Um, I'm a poker player, and uh, during my research to, uh, to become a better poker player, I came upon this ladder of inference thing and I found out that it's helped me a lot in uh, making decisions and uh, achieving conclusions. Um, one of the things that we tend to do is jump to conclusions. I'm sure that you know, you've heard people say, you know, that you're jumping to conclusions to you. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these things. Uh, but first, I would like to thank MD Publishing and Tech Nation uh, for. Uh, providing the opportunity here for uh, for us to discuss the ladder of inference. Uh, I thank the MD Publishing team for their assistance today uh, and uh, the sponsor, Garden Biomedical. Uh, they uh, uh, are, you should support those that support you. Uh, and I also thank you for being here and uh, enhancing uh, your the profession by enhancing yourselves. A little bit about me. 
I have uh, over 10 years in the U.S. Army. I uh, was stationed all over the place uh, in the U.S., Vietnam, Thailand, Germany. Uh, I have uh, over 33 years in the healthcare technology industry and more than that in curriculum design. I learned my curriculum design uh, in uh, Fort Huachuca, Arizona. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also work for uh, manufacturers of uh, Philips and uh, Picker, uh, ISOs, Crest Services, uh, and uh, I'm one of the founders of RCI and a founder of uh, Ditech. Uh, that's my email address there. So uh, if you want to contact me at any time, uh, feel free to to do that. Um, so these are the topics that we're going to discuss today. We're going to talk about the, the sources of the ladder of reference. Where did it come from? Uh, we're going to look at the ladder itself, and we're going to look at uh, some of the problems with the ladder, and then we're going to look at uh, how we can correct some of the mistakes that, that happen when we're climbing the ladders, and we're going to look at some conclusions. As we move through, uh, as Kristen said, please uh, ask any questions you wish to ask. Uh, I will try to uh, answer them at the appropriate time as quickly as possible. <clears throat> so the sources. Uh, this was uh, the letter of inference was first proposed by uh, organizational psychologist and business theorist Chris Argyris of uh, Harvard Business School, and it was uh, further um, uh, enhanced by uh, Peter Senge. Uh, in a book that he called The Fifth Discipline, The Art and Practice of Learning Organization. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's talk about the ladder. Uh, the ladder is essentially a thinking process, uh, mostly unconscious, and the, we all do this. Uh, there's no way to bypass this. We all follow this, this path. We look at an observed fact and that goes into our brain and we modify it, amplify it, uh, however we manipulate it and we arrive at a conclusion and then we may take an action. Now, uh, it's, it's important to realize that uh, most of the time we're unaware of what, what it is we're doing and uh, that's why this presentation uh, is important because what we're going to try to do is make ourselves more cognizant of this ladder and when, how we build the ladder and how we arrive at the wrong conclusion and at the wrong action. So let's take a look at this. This is just the number seven. There's, this is the observed fact. It's just the number seven. There's nothing else in this picture. Now, uh, immediately, you probably are looking at the seven and you're thinking, if, if you're one of those individuals that think that uh, the number seven is a lucky number or an unlucky number, um, you're, you're applying some meaning to that. Uh, you may be thinking of the Magnificent Seven, that old movie, or the Seven Deadly Sins. And if you're a craps player, you're looking at the seven come 11, the seven being the, uh, in the come out role is a good number, but after that, a seven clears the table. So, um, the point is that right now, all there is there on this screen is a seven, and yet we start applying meaning to it. And that's part of what we normally do when we start to building the ladder. Uh, there's something called Miller's Law, uh, which uh, if you look it up, uh, it says that uh, in working memory, we, the normal human being, can only hold uh, seven items plus or minus two which is another reason why I put the seven there because it's the magic number seven so you should look that up and, and read about it it's uh, called Miller's Law so that seven is not reality the reality is that we have a pool of available information uh, in this picture and we have a whole forest of information don't we um, so reality is that there's all, all this information is available to us. This is a beautiful scene. Uh, we have right here a little guy, a little blue guy up in a tree. He's smiling. This little girl right here is all dressed up and pretty and smiling. We have this person here smiling, this person smiling. 
we have a, uh, a squirrel uh, here. We've got a beautiful house. We've got beautiful woods. We've got this bird, and we've got this butterfly over here. So there's a lot of information. So we have this whole forest of information. This is a very beautiful, happy scene, correct? But here's the problem. The problem is that the brain can't take a look at all this information all at once and make uh, a sense of it. So what we do is we look at it with our eye, and our eye can only look at essentially a quarter's worth of information at any time. So if you take this quarter and we moved it around, we would see this little blue guy, or we would see this person over here, or we would see that squirrel, or we would see the bird. Uh, our eye has to move around too much, and there's way too much information. So what we've got to do is select part of this image, and from this image is where we get the information that goes into our brain. So from the pool of available information, the first thing we have to do is select what we're going to concentrate on. So let's just select this bird here, this bird, and our, our quarter would be around the, this much area, and we would select the, the, this is a blackbird, and here's a butterfly, and there's parts of a tree, and there's some background that looks like it may be mountains. That's reality. So reality is when you take a picture so we're looking at this picture but we're going to select from that picture so we're going to be selective about the data that we're going to view so this leads to the first rung the first rung of the ladder is that we selected this area with the bird and the butterfly so that's the first rung of the ladder so we start building the ladder. We're going to be selective about the data that we're going to then modify to achieve a, an action or a conclusion somewhere around the top of this ladder. So we have the bird and the butterfly, the B and B. That's the first rung. Now we all walk around with a uh, a bucket of beliefs and assumptions, uh, things that we believe to be true and assumptions that we've made. Uh, some of it may be facts, some of it may actually uh, be a pure assumption, uh, a, a, an illogical conclusion, but we all walk around with this bucket of information. So what we're going to do is we're going to start evaluating now this B&B, &B, the bird and the butterfly. and so we take our beliefs and assumptions and we apply those to the scene that we selected. So we add meaning now to the bird and the butterfly based on our beliefs and our assumptions. Uh, so we look at this and we say, well, that, uh, that's a black bird. It's probably a crow. Well, uh, we believe that crows, um, we've seen them on the side of the road eating unfortunate squirrels that uh, have met their demise. Um, we, uh, we say, well, if, if the crow eats dead squirrels, then there's probably a possibility that this crow will attack a beautiful little butterfly. So we start adding meaning to this, uh, what we've seen here. And it's based on our beliefs and the previous experiences and the assumptions that we have. Now, in reality, all that that that's true is that the bird and the butterfly are occupying the same adjacent airspace. It does not mean, uh, from when you look at the the actual true uh, picture, it's just a bird, a butterfly, and some other stuff around it. We are the ones that add the meaning to it, and. We must do this because that's the way our brains work. So then the third rung is that we make assumptions based on the added meaning. So we've added meaning, we selected the data, we added meaning to it. Uh, we said, okay, it's a crow and uh, it uh, attacks butterflies. Uh, 
And if you look around a little bit, you see that everybody's all happy. So these people that are in this scene must be happy that crows attack butterflies, including that squirrel that's just below them. The squirrel doesn't care that this squirrel is attacking this butterfly. And the assumptions that we make, because they're based on our beliefs and, and, and our experiences, must be true. They must be correct because we're the ones that came up with it. So you can see that what we've done now is we've taken a what's true and fact captured by a camera and we s selected a piece of it and we started uh, adding meaning and we started making assumptions about it. So now let's put the fourth rung on it. The fourth rung is we draw conclusions. So what do we know so far? It's a it's a it's a crow and it's attacking a butterfly. And it's got to be true because we selected it. So uh this is what we know. So what what happens? We go we say that's a bad bird. That bad bird attacks pretty little butterflies in the forest all the time. And uh, as a result, we think all blackbirds are crows and all crows are bad. So that's a conclusion that we're drawing. So you can see that that may or may not be true in reality, but when we climb the ladder, which we all do, we, we cannot proceed through life without building and climbing these ladders. Uh, when we do that, we may wind up at the wrong conclusion. So what's left? Well, we said all crows are bad. Since all crows are bad, then we have to update our bucket of beliefs. So we didn't know all crows were bad when we started down at the bottom, but now that we've drawn that conclusion, we know that all crows are bad. So we add that to our beliefs and assumptions for the next time we see a crow. When we next time we see a crow, we're going to be looking for uh, pieces of butterfly laying around. So we make changes to our bucket as needed. Now the sixth and the final rung, this is the harmful one. It's okay to jump to conclusions. It's all right, okay to have bad assumptions, it's okay to pick the wrong data. All of that stuff is harmless because it's internal. It's when we do something that's external that can cause problems. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when we take action, that's when we run into issues. That's when we make uh, bad things happen. If our conclusions that we made and our belief systems and all of that were not in line with reality, then we're going to take the inappropriate action. So since we've made all these conclusions that crows are bad birds and they eat butterflies and we don't want them to eat pretty little butterflies, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take some action. So what action are we going to take? We're going to arm that squirrel. We're going to give that squirrel some ammunition and a machine gun so that the squirrel can shoot all blackbirds, all crows when sees it. So you can see that in this particular case that would be probably a bad uh, reaction because what have we done? We've taken and generated an army of armed squirrels. So you can see that doing it's the action that's the that's the, the cause of problems. When we build these ladders, we need to be very careful about how we build that ladder and especially careful about the rungs that, uh, that we build and the action that we take. So in order to prevent future massacres of butterflies, we massacre the crows. Okay, so let's talk about more problems with the ladder.
here's the problem. You have a pool of available information that is true, that is fact, that you can capture with a camera. But then you must select something from that pool. So are you selecting the right pool of information that you're then going to wind up taking an action? <clears throat> Excuse me. So is it the correct forest that we're looking at? Because remember, it's a forest of information. We selected this particular forest. And this particular forest had this beautiful little scene in it, but now we know that it's, uh, there's murders going on in, in this beautiful scene all the time. We could have picked this forest. In this forest, we would pick something from that forest and we would wind up making a different, building a different ladder from that forest, right? So we need to make sure we're looking at the right forest. This, the forest on the left would, get, would give us different results. So you can see that selecting the correct forest is important. We could have selected this forest, and that would definitely give us different results. So from the pool of available information, from the forest of information, we're going to select some data. We have to make sure that it is the correct data, that we move our quarter into the right area of the available information so that we analyze and modify the appropriate part. Now, we chose, we took our quarter and we placed it in the lower left-hand corner where there's the bird and the butterflies and that's why we came with to the conclusion and the actions that we took. However, if we would have concentrated here at the roof of the beautiful little house in the forest, we would wind up arriving at a different conclusion or action. And if we would have looked at the squirrel, then maybe we would have seen that the squirrel does not need a gun. So then the second rung is the rung, and once we've, we've uh, picked the, the appropriate uh, pool of available information, looked at the right forest, and we put our quarter in the proper area within that picture, uh, we, add, we add meaning to it. And we need to make sure it's the correct meaning. Uh, we all carry this bucket of beliefs, assumptions, and our own version of reality that we carry around with us. This is what we use to arrive at a meaning to the data that we selected. We need to make sure that we have the proper scoop of information that we're going to build the ladder with. If we do not grab the right information from our beliefs, then we're going to have the wrong meaning. And um, you know, once you select the data and you add the meaning, you're done. You're, you're, you're on your way to building an action, and the only way to make sure that action is correct is to look at the right forest, select the right data, and add the right meaning. So then the third rung is where we make assumptions. This is where we, uh, since we added meaning from that meaning, we know it to be correct because we're the ones that added that meaning. We're the ones that carry that bucket of, of information with us. So when we add that assumption, that uh, meaning, we can make an assumption from that. And of course, the assumption is going to be the correct one in our mind. And we know what happens whenever you uh, assume anything. There's a cute little donkey. Uh, where did you put your quarter when you looked at this donkey? The next rung, the fourth rung, is that I conclude. 
I, may, I arrive at, at a conclusion, I arrive at a judgment uh, based on the data, the meaning, and the assumptions. Once we make that conclusion, we're ready for action. So we, we should make absolutely sure that that is the correct conclusion because we're making a judgment. And uh, this good conclusions come from experience and of course experience comes from bad conclusions. We, although I really like monkeys, we shouldn't be thinking like a monkey, we should be thinking like an Einstein when we arrive at the conclusions. We should be able to arrive at better conclusions than our little furry cousins here, although Einstein is pretty furry also. The fifth rung is I update. It would be no good to arrive at a conclusion without updating our pool of information that we carry around with us. So our, our the, the bucket of, of uh, beliefs we need to make sure that we update them correctly because we're going to use this in future uh, on future data to add meaning to future data that we select. Uh, in our example here we arrived at a conclusion that all blackbirds are crows, all crows are bad because they eat butterflies and they should be eliminated. So we add that to this, our beliefs bucket, and next time we see a crow, we are going to look for a squirrel with a gun to eliminate it. So you can see that that is probably not the correct thing to do uh, when we update the, with using the wrong beliefs, because if our beliefs are incorrect in any way, then our meaning will always be incorrect, and so well, our assumptions and conclusions, and you can see that that's why that's a problem. The sixth rung is I act, and this is the the bad uh, thing. If you act on the wrong meaning, on the wrong conclusion, you're likely to to get into trouble. And this is what we all do. I mean, we're all under pressure to act. Act now, act now. You know, just move along. Uh, especially today's uh, uh, business environment means that we can't really take a lot of time doing things. Uh, and when, when we are doing an analysis, what we're doing is we're building a ladder. And that ladder can lead us to, to the wrong action. So, we must resist the pressure long enough to make sure that we're on the correct ladder at the appropriate rung. Again, the sixth rung is the very dangerous step. And then I'm adding a rung called Manny's rung. Um, and this is the one where you accept the consequences for your actions. Um, we normally look at uh, consequences as a negative, but you know, often consequences are good. So uh, consequences does not mean here bad. It just means the results that are that are achieved as a result of the action. Um, here you can go to truth or consequences, but if you make the wrong turn, you're going to wind up at the city of elephant butt. Um, I've been in truth or consequences, but I've never been in an elephant's butt. Okay, I have uh, a question here that says, which rung do most people fall off the ladder on? Um, well, you would think it would be the top rung because that's where you do, that's where you take the action, and that's where there are no more steps except for this step here of accepting consequences. But the, the, the most important misstep not to take would be the first step. And the first step is uh, to select the data from the appropriate uh, forest of information. 
the if you select the wrong data guaranteed you're going to wind up at the wrong conclusion so the most important part is to gather the right data although falling off the ladder is going to happen when you take action um, okay um, I'll move on I thought I had another question but uh, I didn't now I want to talk a little bit about in the consequences section here about the difference between responsibility and accountability um, we we of course have to take responsibility for our actions because after all we're the ones that made it um, but responsibility uh, carries no consequences it just means that well I'm the one that uh, that did it uh, accountability is where there's some uh, some reaction now, accountability is what uh, when, when you hear uh, uh, people in, in government say I take full responsibility for whatever happened uh, they're saying yeah okay I'll take responsibility but I'm not going to accept the consequences I'm not going to accept accountability there's a different huge difference between responsibility and accountability accountability is where you're going to uh, there's going to be uh, some pain there's going to be some uh, additional action that must be taken uh, it goes along with the four pieces of management and leadership where you have power authority responsibility and accountability power and authority go together responsibility and accountability go together when you hear uh, somebody in government say I take full responsibility what you want them to say is I take accountability you can hold me accountable for that um, so this man is wrong here when I say accept the consequences accept the responsibility for the action that you took for the ladder that you build for the climbing of that ladder and for the uh, for the actions the consequences that that uh, result and then if it's good then you can throw a party if they're bad then you need to take additional actions okay um, I I'm not getting many questions so I'm, I'm a little concerned that uh, all of you went away if you did raise your hand please if you didn't I'm positive that there must be some questions that you have so uh, uh, I, I must say that this is a very uh, uh, kind of uncomfortable venue for me because I'm one of those guys that stands up I'm a talking head in front of a group and here I don't see anybody I don't I don't have any any feedback so I don't I don't have any shaking heads I don't have anybody falling asleep I don't see any any reaction so uh, please uh, provide me with something at least a thumbs up or a thumbs down or something okay okay so after the action after you take that action you must be prepared to evaluate the results to look at the consequences and see if the consequences are the des are the desired result if not then you have to uh, extricate yourself from that ladder and rebuild another ladder you must accept the consequences um, now accepting the consequences doesn't mean that that you have to ex uh, accept whatever happened okay if if change what can be what cannot be accepted if you can't accept it you've got to change it however if you can if you cannot change it then you've got to accept it and so you can see that some consequences some the results of some actions you can change but there are those that you cannot change and that's why we must be very very careful about the uh, the, the building the proper ladder 
Uh, okay, I have a question here. How do I find the right forest? Well, I guess the assumption is that you're in a particular situation, so the forest is situational, and that there is something about the forest that you're in, whether you're in an environment with uh, a significant other, where you're in a business environment, if you're sitting in front of a supervisor, if you have a report sitting in front of you, uh, by report I mean someone that reports to you, uh, that is the uh, pool of available information. So from that pool of available information, let's say, let's say that uh, you have uh, a report sitting in front of your desk and they came up with a question for you. All right. Well, the, the pool of information includes your desk, your chair, it includes what you're wearing, what the person is wearing, the lighting in the room, all the lamps, the books, all of that is the pool of available information. However, the, uh, the selecting the right data would be sitting, it's sitting right in front of you. So the pool of information is uh, generally, you're already immersed in that pool of information. So uh, it's what's available. So you picking the, the right data is the most important part. Okay, I have one here. I don't like to admit when I'm wrong. How do you suggest accepting responsibility graciously? Um, well, I guess the assumption from this is that the action has already been taken. If the action has already been taken, how do you extricate yourself uh, when you know you're wrong and save face? Well, in communication, the most important thing in any communication is telling the what, the why, what can be expected, and gaining acceptance or understanding. So you must say what happened, why it happened, tell people the result they can expect uh, from what you're telling them so that you don't allow them to make up an unrealistic expectation from whatever you told them. And then you must have, you must get them to say, yes, I accept it, or nod their head, or something. So how do you extricate yourself from a situation where you took an action that was the wrong action? Well, honesty. You know, people appreciate when you tell them the truth. And people kind of generally know when you're lying. Now, depending on your personality, there's some personalities just cannot ad admit very easily that they made a mistake. As a matter of fact, some personalities will just move along and say that's uh, your fault, we'll move along. Some personalities will feel really, really bad about having made, taken the wrong action. Some personalities will say, well, let's go discuss this over a beer where the environment is more conducive to, uh, to our being together. And some personalities will go and analyze and analyze and analyze to see what went wrong. However, to admit that you're wrong is very important. I made a mistake. Um, now, I'm a believer that you should not apologize just to apologize. In order for you to be sorry about something, to actually say, I'm sorry about that, I'm sorry, you had to either have had bad intent to begin with, in which case there's no way you can be sorry, or you didn't have uh, any bad intent, so then you couldn't uh, be sorry. So it's important that you are you are empathetic with the results, not with, with the actions. In other words, I can't say to you, I'm sorry if you didn't understand, uh, because now that's on you. You have, I have to say something like, I need to change the way I'm presenting it to help you understand. So to help me help you. And uh, when you do that, it, it puts you in a situation where you're in a uh, shared environment of cooperation. Um, if you're wrong, 
you have to you have to admit it. You have to admit it. The other person already knows you're wrong. Why would you not admit it? Oh, I now have a question here that uh, can you give some examples of the latter based on the biomed industry? Well, um, since the latter is essentially a people issue, uh, then there are going to be wrong conclusions made all the time. Um, let's take a customer relations situation where uh, as a service person, how many people service uh, actually perform service? Raise your hands. Okay, both of you. When you are in a service situation where you're performing a service, I have, I have seen where an individual did not check in with the individual that caused, called them to perform the service. It was a, um, a film processor, which are kind of gone away now, but I'm pretty old, so I know what those are. And this guy, uh, the doctor was uh, about to open up a clinic on Monday. This is Sunday. Everything's going bad. The processor is not working. And he's walking by. This was in Detroit. He's walking by the where the uh, films come out uh, out of the wall, out into where the doctor can grab them. And there's this uh, this guy that's all disheveled and greasy looking and, and really nasty. He looked like a homeless person sitting there against the wall. And the doctor says, who are you? What are you doing here? And the guy says, I'm Butch. I'm here to fix, I'm here uh, fixing the processor. You called for service, didn't you? Okay, well, what happens here? The doctor first took the available information and looked at this guy as I did and said, okay, this guy is a homeless guy. He shouldn't be here. So when he takes that action of, you know, who are you? I'm about to throw you out. Then the guy changed the ladder that the doctor needed to be on because now he's the service guy. However, he doesn't look like a service guy. He didn't do all the things he should have done. He didn't report in, at, you know, try to establish a relationship and all those things that you should do. So now the doctor is really mad. He changed the ladder and took the doctor right up to the top of a different ladder. And the doctor, I, I left because I didn't want to hear all the things that were being said to this individual. So ladders happen all the time. People change the ladders on you all the time. Um, anytime you're dealing with any individual, you're, you're, you're each building ladders. Okay, when a company utilizes Lean or Six Sigma, could the ladder of inference, since internal to everyone, be counterintuitive to the quality process you are trying to incorporate? Okay, I have no idea what this question means. I kind of do. Um, Okay, from what I understand of Six Sigma and all these processes, these processes are trying to eliminate the ability to build wrong ladders. Well, you, that's impossible. It is impossible not to have the ability to build the wrong ladder, in my opinion. Whenever, you're, whenever you have data, Unless someone says this is the pool of information and this is the data that you will work with and here's how you're going to uh, add, uh, interpret this data, here's how you're going to add meaning to this data, here's how, but if, if, if that's the process, then you, they don't need you. You're not needed. So as an individual, there is no way that you are not going to build a ladder. So what these processes do is try to eliminate you headed in the wrong direction. And I understand that there's uh, that that they work, but anytime you're dealing with humans, there's a really good shot 
at somebody building the wrong ladder and getting the right, uh, getting the wrong, taking the wrong action and arriving at the wrong uh, uh, consequence. So, if I may be, go back to here, excuse me. Um, it's important that you accept the consequences, evaluate the results, and change what cannot be accepted, and then accept what cannot be changed. So at each rung of the ladder, ask yourself, what am I doing? And why am I doing? What am I thinking about? Why am I thinking this way? What possible wrong information am I using to build my ladder? Now, this is not a simple task. Um, you know, when you when you start on that ladder, remember you've got that uh, that rush to take action. There's always somebody pushing you to take action. So, uh, on each rung, you must say, "Am I? Is this the data that I need to be acting upon? Is this?" the meaning that I should be getting from the data that I just chose? Is this the assumption that I should be making as a result of the meaning that I myself applied? Is this the conclusion that I should be uh, arriving at? Is this conclusion now something that I want to add to my bucket of beliefs? And is this the right action that I'm going to take? So you can see why we don't do this. You can see why we always, you know, arrive at wrong conclusions, make the wrong judgment, arrive at the wrong actions, because the process is not simple. The process is difficult. So if you just start with the most basic, which is the data that you're going to evaluate, uh, if, if you can do that step, then you're way ahead of the game. Um, and all we can do here is get you to be cognizant of the fact that the ladder exists, that we do it unconsciously, that we do it all the time, that we all do it, and whenever we are communicating with, communicating with another individual of anything of substance, we need to make sure that we negotiate the rungs of the ladders so that we can arrive at the right conclusion. So all communication is a negotiation. It cannot be one way. Uh, the only way to, without feedback, there is no communication. So you must make sure that you negotiate the proper ladder. Okay, I've got here. When troubleshooting a problem with a piece of medical equipment, we look at the problem and draw a conclusion. Are you saying that this process is on the assume rung? What about the equipment you know nothing about? What steps do you follow then? Well, let's say that you're trained on a piece of equipment and you are going to, uh, you look at a problem, okay? Now, I don't know about you, but if you, uh, th there's times when I have seen people fix the wrong thing. They don't fix what it is that the customer is complaining about because they know the machine, they find a problem, they fix that problem, but the customer was calling for something else, and that's why it's so important to, uh, to show up, report in, and talk to the people. Um, so knowing the machine can be a bad thing. I... Uh, I taught uh, radiology service for many years, and I knew some machines pretty well. And because I knew those machines, I made assumptions about things rather than check those things. And what happened is somebody that knew nothing about the machine was able to fix it because they did things like check to make sure it's on, check to make sure the plugs are tight, check to make sure the boards are all plugged in. You know, the things you can do that don't cost you anything, but that we experienced people assume. So the question, uh, are we on the assume rung when we arrive at a conclusion? Well, 
we cannot arrive at a conclusion without selecting data, adding meaning, uh, and, and, and adding that meaning from what we already know, and that, that the latter is built in a particular sequence. So you, you're not really skipping rungs, you're using previous knowledge to add the meaning so you can arrive at the conclusion quicker. But you're still climbing the you're still climbing and building the ladder. Now, if you know nothing about something, then the process is still the same. Those of you who are in service, the ladder of inference is in fact a troubleshooting technique, is it not? You know, you make sure you're in the right machine. You make sure you're at the right symptoms. That's the data that you're selecting. You make sure that you add meaning to that data based on your experience, right? Uh, you don't really have to know how a particular machine works to know that, well, uh, it, you know, this is how x-rays are made, so I'm going to look for KVMA in time. Uh, you know, so how does this machine do it? Well, that's data that I need to, to look up. So the process is still the same. Uh, this ladder is actually... Uh, the troubleshooting techniques that uh, you were taught in school. Well, I'm being flooded here. What do you do if you know something to be true, a fact, but no one believes it or doesn't accept it? <laughs> uh, well, welcome to the club. Um, if you know something to be true, you have to make sure that how you arrived at the fact that this is true. How did you arrive at that fact? Because if you pick the wrong data, you're going to find the truth in this direction. If you pick the right data, you're going to find the truth in the other direction. So uh, how do you get someone, if it's absolute fact, um, help them build the ladder. Take them through the steps of building the ladder so they can arrive at the same conclusion as you did. Negotiate that ladder with them, which means communicate. Tell them what and why, and make sure that you tell them what their expectations should be. When we communicate with people, we're going to tell them what, but we hardly tell them why, and we almost never give them the consequences that they, sh they, they should expect, what, their expectations. So that most people run around with unrealistic expectations because we didn't give them their expectations. And then the final step is to get the feedback, get the acceptance. So you must communicate it. Uh, if you are in a situation right now where somebody won't accept it, tell them you attended this and tell them, uh, you know, here's the, this ladder of inference. Uh, help me arrive at your conclusion by going through the ladder of inference, tell me how you arrived at it, and then uh, what will happen is you'll, you'll at least have a, a dialogue with them. Okay, in some situations, making a judgment quickly is needed and can even save lives. How do you distinguish right from wrong actions in this case? Well, um, there's a hint of morality here. Um, but I'm, I'm not saying that you have to, uh, when you're, I mean, we all build ladders very quickly. So if you are very experienced at building a ladder, you, you can build a ladder very quickly. Um, let's take an example of a life-threatening situation. Um, uh, you're a paramedic and there's a car accident, right? Well, you don't have to say, okay, what's the, what is the pool of available information? There's somebody laying there bleeding, so you know you can quickly narrow down to what the data you need to do. You need to, uh, what is that? Uh, clear the airway, stop the bleeding, treat for shock, and dress the wound. Right? So you know that stuff already. So you can add meaning really quickly. There's blood. You need to do that. So um, yes. But if it's a new situation and somebody is asking you to make a really quick decision, it is an unrealistic expectation on their part for you to make a decision 
when you don't have a, all the available information that you need. Uh, so when you're met with an unrealistic expectation, the way to handle that is to kind of chuckle a little bit, just say, Haha, well, you know, I, I really can't make that decision. A chuckle is very important because the, what you're trying to do is make them feel a little foolish for having had that unrealistic expectation. So you say something like, Haha, uh, you know, I'm going to need more additional information. I'm not even sure what data I'm supposed to be acting on. Give me, and then ask for, you know, 15 minutes. You know, now if it's a life-threatening situation, then if you can't make that decision in, in a very quick amount of time, then you're probably not the one that should be making the decision. Okay, how do we improve our ladder? Okay, um, well, we're going to be talking about that. Um, but essentially, we improve the ladder by knowing what the ladder is, by how the ladder affects our decisions, our conclusions, and our actions. And by trying, it takes about two to three weeks to make a habit. So for two or three weeks, Start with the unimportant issues and build. make sure you build the right ladders. And once you internalize that, once you, it becomes a habit, you'll be, you'll be better and quicker at it. Just like you're better or quicker at fixing equipment because you practiced it, you've internalized it. It becomes part of the, uh, uh, the, the, the not, not the, uh, uh, remember that the magic number seven, you know, that the seven things that we can handle at once normally, well, that's only in the, in the live memory. Once it becomes part of the actual uh, memory, uh, that's a rote memory, then it's easy to, to, to handle that situation. Um, so uh, that's how you improve it. You, you, you practice, you practice, and you practice until it becomes part of your permanent memory. Everything we've talked about here is still in your short memory, your, your temporary memory. And we've talked about many things, but there's only six steps to the ladder. You should be able to handle seven things. Okay, another thing that I suggest is that whenever you take action, it is very, very good thing if you have a well-defined value system because then your decisions are easier. If you can remain within your value system, the decisions are easy. If the decision would be something outside of your value system, then the decision is easy. You don't make that decision. You don't do that. So having a well-defined value system it was one of the most valuable things you can have in business and in life. It will help you build the proper ladder. So let's look at some conclusions. What is the ladder of inference? Well, we all build and climb one. You're building and climbing it right now. I'm building and climbing a ladder right now. What we're trying to do, what I'm trying to do here is almost unilaterally build the same ladder with you. I'm taking you through the steps of, of what the uh, pool of available information, where your forest is. I'm, to, I'm, I'm uh, taking your quarter and moving it to the spot that I want you to look at. I'm adding the meaning to it. I'm adding the, the conclusions. I'm adding the, 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 the whole thing. And uh, we're, now we're going to be took. I mean, we're, we're looking at the, the action that we're going to take. So I'm helping you build that ladder. We're all mostly unaware. As you walk around, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that are unaware that they build ladders and climb ladders and jump to conclusions and all of this stuff. We don't know that we build it. We don't know that we climb it. We don't know when we build it. We don't know when we climb it. But if you be, can make yourself aware of that, 
You're going to go a long way. Uh, what else are we aren't aware of? That the climb is the cause of all decisions. This ladder is how we arrive at decisions, good and bad. And, of course, this is how we take actions, both good and bad. All right. So, what is, what is the bottom line here? The bottom line is that we're going to uh, enhance our decision-making process and improve relationships. That's what we're going to do. We're going to improve relationships with people. That's what this is all about. So we've got to help others. We have to help others build the correct ladder. We have to help them climb the ladder so they don't fall off. We have to take people and, that have the wrong belief and the wrong assumptions bucket and remove some of the stuff from the bucket and add stuff to their bucket. Okay? That's not an easy task. We have to help them arrive at the right conclusion and take the correct action and we must refuse to climb others incorrect ladders. Uh, when I found out about this thing, uh, it helped me in poker, it helped me in life, and it also irritated my wife Ruth uh, because whenever I saw that she was climbing the wrong ladder, that she was building the wrong ladder, I would say, I will not climb that ladder with you today. And, of course, that would irritate her, and uh, she would uh, stop talking to me, which, you know, in itself may be a good thing. But the point is that when you hear and see people just come to some crazy conclusion that doesn't make any sense, but yet they arrived at that conclusion, you must correct them at the minimum don't climb the ladder with them. Now, when you say to somebody, I will not climb that ladder with you today, it gives you the opportunity to answer their question, what are you talking about? What ladder? And then you can tell them about the ladder of inference and help them build the, the right conclusion and the, pick the right data. If you, if you pick the wrong data, you're going to have the wrong ladder. So, uh, you know, how did you arrive at that conclusion? Okay, well, here's, here's maybe a better data that you can look at. Whatever words mean that. Uh, but you can help others. And you will walk through life not climbing other people's wrong ladders. Now, you should always leave people better for having known you. And uh, one way you can do that is to help them to arrive at the right actions and conclusions. And question, when is the best time to plant a tree? Somebody answer it. Somebody type it in. When is the best time to plant a tree? Silence. In the spring. In the spring. Um, when it's a seed. I'm sorry, in the spring? In the spring, when it's a seed, Harbor Day. When is Harbor Day? When it's a seed? Today. Okay, well, I'm going to say that you're all, you all chose to climb a particular ladder, didn't you? Did you not? Whoever said in the spring, uh, how did you arrive that in the spring? Well, because you picked the fact that the seed is going to wind up being in the ground at the wrong time if you don't plant it in the spring. Uh, somebody said when it's a seed. Well, if it's not a seed, uh, well, can't you plant the tree with that? is a tree already. Uh, I've seen it done. Uh, 
today, today would be a good time to plant a tree, sure, after the sun goes down <laughs> and when you need one. All right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what ladder I climbed. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago because in 20 years it will probably be a tree. Now what is the second best time to plant a tree? Somebody answer that. I see the little dots is coming along. I need to tell you a joke while we're oh, too late for the joke. When you tell me to, <laughs> I know who that came from. Uh, that is a very well disciplined child. Before you're hungry, right? The uh, you reap what you sow and. Or, all that stuff. Uh, the Jiminy Cricket uh, and the old uh, grasshopper. Uh, now do future generations can enjoy now so the future generations can enjoy it? Okay. Well, if the best time to plant a tree in my ladder is 20 years ago, the second best time is right now. Now is the best time, the second time, it's the second best time to plant a tree while you're thinking about it. So I hope that some of this stuff made some sense to you. I hope that I added value. I hope that uh, you take some of this and take some of the things that I said that you liked uh, and, whether, and, and, and try to internalize them. Take some of the things that you didn't like and try to understand why you didn't like them and email me I'll be happy to to answer any questions again my email is manny m-a-n-n-y dot roman r-o-m-a-n at e m-e dot com um, just try to try to put some of these things into into action and uh, the best time for you to have done this was 20 years ago but the second best time is to start right now today right now today if there are some of you that were watching this together go back and take five minutes and discuss these things and see how you're going to uh, internalize some of these things um, okay, I thank Manny, you uh, we're, we're live with you now um, so we want to thank you so much for your time today and I personally I want to thank you for empowering me to not climb John Krieg's ladder uh, because I've been looking for a reason to say that to him. Uh, before we end today's session, I just want to remind everybody that you will be getting an email survey sent to you following the conclusion of this. And once you receive that and complete it, you will be eligible for the CE credits. We will send out certificates within three weeks of today's date. You can also visit IamTechNation.com for a complete list of our scheduled webinars for the rest of the year. Uh, that pretty much concludes today's presentation. We want to thank you all again for joining us and look forward to seeing you on or talking with you on March 26th for Tim Shaver's topic, Get It Done, Delegate. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.